Hey, thank you for sitting in on <clears throat> this third installment of uh, lessons that have to do with life, how to deal with difficult situations. We've already talked about bullying and sexual harassment. Appreciate y'all checking those out and your feedback has been very helpful and enlightening. All right, today is about mental wellness and suicide prevention. Just like the other two, a very difficult topic to you know sit through and listen to or whatever, but we're just asking you to for these few minutes to really just lock in. It's an uncomfortable discussion, and a lot of times when things are uncomfortable, we don't want to listen, we want to step out. Um, and that's you know, if you need to, totally understandable. All right, but the more that we can lean into this uncomfortable stuff. We can like come out of it stronger with some strategies and some skills. All right. So here we go. What is mental wellness? Mental wellness is about how we feel about ourselves and the world around us. And this affects how we think, feel, behave, handle, handle stressful situations, interact with others, and make decisions for our lives. And really everything that we do in life really begins with how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about our life's situation, right? And it comes from a bunch of outside stuff, right? And, and how we deal with that and how we work together to make it through that stuff, that's a big part of mental wellness. All right, so a lot of what... Uh, Dealing with mental health, mental wellness, suicide prevention has to do with is what, how do we learn how to deal with the pain in our lives, the difficulties in our lives, right? The things that stress us out in our lives, okay? And unfortunately, and this pertains to me too, unfortunately, we think that if we armor up our heart, that that's going to like really solve the problem of this whole pain situation. And that's not how it works. So dealing with pain comes from a lot of pain comes from a lot of different areas. And starting it up the top, these are just, you know, some, it's not all of them, but it's a lot. Racism, right? That causes so much pain in people's lives. Anti-LGBTQ policies, money challenges, relationships. Up just having a place to stay, how our family operates, right? What's our family dynamic? Grief and loss and sadness and traumas of all kinds. They don't even have to be like big life event traumatic experiences. They can be small ones each day or many days that add up and they deliver this really, you know, bad dose of, of pain in our lives. Sexism is another situation in this country that really just puts out a lot of pain into people's lives, women's lives, right? So here's what we typically do. Like I said, we, we think that if we armor up our heart, it's going to make this huge difference in how we deal with pain because I just don't want to feel it no more, right? But look up at the numbers. So starting with number one, we think if we close off our heart, number two, we won't feel fear, hurt, pain, sadness, right? But as you go down to the left-hand corner, number three, not true. It's not true at all. It actually has the opposite effect. When we close off our heart, guess what? Pain and hurt, sadness, fear, they will still find us. And because we've closed off our heart, we miss out on joy, happiness, and fun. So one of the first steps in dealing with pain is do not close off our heart. This is the natural reaction. It is not the thing to do. We have to do the opposite. We have to like deal with the pain, talk it through with someone, right? Keep doing our daily practices of whatever it is that inspires us. Think accurately about, yes, this is a painful situation, but it will pass and it's going to take some work, you know, and it, it means stepping out with my friends or if I don't have too many friends with the one friend, 
right? Come into the care center, the care center annex, your counselor, a trusted adult, a trusted friend, right? We will make it through this together. And armoring up our heart, trying to numb ourselves, it's, it doesn't work. All right, here is a quick video. I'm going to divide it into two parts. All right, in the middle, I got a little something to say really quick. <clears throat> um, this is from the district. And it's a good little short um, explanation that we do all have mental health. You can't tell how someone feels just by looking at them or what they share online. To the outside world, our lives may look perfect, even if in reality they aren't. I'm always worrying about doing well at school, and with the end of year test coming up, I'm not sure how much longer I can cope. My thoughts swarm around my head, sometimes keeping me up all night. Some days it's just all too much, and I feel like I'm lost in space. When I did badly on one of my tests, I just about kept it together until I got home. Then I broke down crying in front of my mum. She listened for a bit, and then she told me that, just like physical health, we all have mental health. It's our feelings, our thinking, our emotions and our moods. She then said that feeling down, angry and stressed is a normal part of life. Just like it's normal to feel happy, confident and carefree sometimes. We all have positive and negative emotions that come and go based on what's happening around us. These are everyday feelings. Good mental health means experiencing negative emotions. It's not always about being happy. Mum can relate to the feelings of stress. So when mum suggested I take a break from everything and do something I enjoy, I actually took her advice. So I made myself a hot chocolate, snuggled up in a duvet and watched a film. And you know what? Afterwards I felt so much better. Mum should take her own advice. Everywhere that I'm fortunate to speak, I ask students this question. I'm, I, I say, look at my hands, my right hand, is academics and my left hand is mental health, mental wellness, emotional intelligence. And I'm like, what is it going to take, you know, for us to elevate mental health and mental wellness and emotional intelligence equal to academics, right? And then I ask them to take my right hand. My right hand is academics. I ask them move my hand at a level that in your years in the education system, what's the importance that they have placed on your academics? And they move my hand. And I'm like, okay, my left hand is your mental health, your mental wellness, your emotional intelligence skills. Now move my hand to where the education system has placed the importance of this in your experience in schools and they move my hands accordingly. And without fail, I'm not gonna give it away, you guys do it on your own. This is a really good exercise for you to take a minute to do a little self-reflection on your years in school. Where would you put my hand in terms of how schools have placed the importance of academics? And where would you put my hand <clears throat> on to where Schools have placed the importance of your mental health, your mental wellness, your emotional intelligence skills, right? Then I also do this with teachers. I'm like, all right, my right hand is what um, importance does the school districts uh, place on my right hand, which is your pacing chart, standardized test scores, all of that kind of stuff. And then on my left hand is where does the school district place the importance of your mental health, your mental wellness, right? Your emotional intelligence skills. Move my hands accordingly. And without fail, that's I get the same response, all right? So just for a second, I would encourage you to do that right now in the middle of this video lesson that the district has asked us to put together, right? Take a second and then think of some ways, how can we, as this picture illustrates, how can we elevate 
mental wellness skills, uh, mental health skills, emotional intelligence skills equal to academics. Most of us only ever share the good things. We don't like to share how we really feel. Every morning when I wake up, negative thoughts stream through my head. Getting out of bed and pretending I'm okay takes all the energy I have. As the day goes on, the negative thoughts turn from a stream into a river. The water rushes through my head so loudly it's hard to concentrate in lessons. And some days it's so bad it feels like a waterfall that's trying to pull me over the edge. Everything is so overwhelming. I didn't think my friends would understand if I told them how down I was feeling. But when Sasha opened up to me about how stressed she was feeling, I told her. I wasn't sure how to bring up how I'd been feeling, so I started by saying that I didn't feel like myself. Just her listening made me feel like she understood. She told me some things that had helped her, so I tried them too, but it didn't make much of a difference. Even when I tried to be around my friends, I felt alone. The things I used to enjoy weren't fun anymore. I was really worried about Andre and not sure what to do. He was quiet and wasn't hanging out with us like he used to. So I asked our head of year for some advice. He suggested I get Andre to speak to him since his negative feelings weren't going away. I didn't want to speak to our head of year, but I also didn't want to keep feeling so down, so I went. He said that sometimes we have overwhelming feelings that can be more intense than our everyday feelings. These feelings hang around for a long time and change the way we feel, think and behave. They can stop us doing what we want to in life. That's what I was going through. He also said that if we're physically unwell, we let people know, we ask for help. It should be no different with mental health. Sometimes our overwhelming feelings are brought on because of things in our life. Sometimes they happen for no reason at all. After hearing this, I felt much less alone and it felt good to talk. Scientists have found exercise can help when you're feeling low. So our head of year encouraged me to sign up to the school football club, which Sasha was already in. I still have days when the river is there, but now I'm beginning to understand my mental health. I'm learning how to cope. Our head of year reminded me that my friends, family, teachers, and lots of others at school are there to help just as much as he is. I had no idea the people around me could be so understanding. And while it's not always easy to talk about my mental health, the person I'm talking to might be able to help. If you don't feel like talking, that's fine. You could try writing, sports, reading, art, music, playing with your pet, whatever makes you feel better. If you're the person someone talks to when they're struggling, just listen with no pressure or judgment. You don't have to have the answer. If you feel unsure about anything, you can speak to a trusted adult. Talking about mental health doesn't have to be difficult. After all, it's something we all have. So now that you've watched this, just take a minute. What is the important message that you got out of this video? You can journal it, write it down, discuss it in class, right? Hi everyone, this is Ms. Galvez, a school social worker up here in the Care Center Annex in room 124. And I just wanted to share a little bit about mental wellness and feelings that can be related to mental wellness. Um, everyday feelings versus overwhelming feelings. So now, everyday feelings are, you know, feelings that, well, they come and go. Uh, they're normal reactions to life experiences and they change, but they do not remain for very long versus overwhelming feelings. Now, overwhelming feelings can persist for long periods of time. They're not necessarily in response to a specific experience. Um, they may change the way we behave, the way we act, the way we function in our lives, and they may be called mental health problems or mental illness or a mental disorder. Now, um, what can you do when you feel overwhelmed? There's many things you can do. Um, I'll share just a few. Well, one is that you can just stop and take a break. Um, you can do some deep breathing, do some meditation, um, talk to a trusted adult, exercise, create some art, read a book, 
reach out to a friend if you can do that. Write in a journal. Uh, if you have a pet, maybe play with your pet, listen to music, or even watch a movie. And I just wanna end by saying that being able to be your true self is one of the strongest components of good mental health. Okay, bye. And as it says over on the right, self-care isn't selfish. Loving myself first is crucial to being able to love others and to um, be at my best for the day. This is a really, really short video on how can we reach out for help. A lot of times we feel like you know asking for help is a weakness and it's just the opposite. Asking for help is a superpower. When I ask for help, which I do all the time, man, it's me saying I want to get better at something. I want to improve in some area of my life. And, and, and today we're talking about mental health. So asking for help through a situation, no matter what it is, that's a superpower. If you've been feeling sad, stressed, or just not yourself lately, but don't know why, it might be time to talk to your parent, guardian, or an adult you trust. Even if you aren't sure what you need, it's better to ask for help than to try to deal with it alone. Whether you reach out by having a conversation or sending a text, here are some helpful tips. Think about what you want to tell them. What's worrying you the most? What do you need? Try getting your thoughts organized by writing them down first. Share examples of what's going on, and then give them a chance to ask questions. The more honest you are, the more they'll be able to understand and help you. If you don't feel heard, don't give up. Reach out to another adult you trust. Someone is out there to help you. Even if you don't feel like it's a big deal, don't keep your feelings inside. You deserve help getting through this. Now, as, as we move in through this, what if things get serious? I mean, all mental health stuff is serious, right? Depression, anxiety, uh, any of those. All the trauma stuff, the pain stuff that we talked about, that I talked about earlier in the video. Sometimes, though, we start like really getting into um, a dark place, which I have been. And sometimes individuals might feel bad enough that they consider hurting themselves, which is known as self-harm, or killing themselves, which is known as suicide. We can all help prevent suicide. Understanding the issues concerning suicide and mental health is an important way to take part in suicide prevention and help others in crises. How can you help yourself? Right? How can I help myself? And I have done this. I have gone to a trusted adult and told them what's going on. It's not easy, but it's super powerful. Be around people who are caring. And I would rather use the word energetic because when I'm in a, a dark place, the last thing I want to hear is, oh, just be more positive. No, but I do want to be around good energy. I want to be around people who are... Uh, optimistic, right? Number three, ask someone to help you figure out what to do about a problem you're facing. No matter, and please know this, that keeping stuff to yourself, like it's something that you're shameful about or feeling guilty about or whatever, holding it in just gives it the power. Once you release it, you tell a trusted person, right? Write it down on the journal, you know, and then share that with someone that releases the negative power and brings it to light where it needs to be so that we can work through it, that you can work through it. And then lastly, you know, not, not lastly, but fourth, because they're all like equal in importance, um, work with a therapist or a counselor, super powerful, all of them. How can you support your friends? Know that you are not equipped to cure your friend. Be genuine, listen, and don't show shock or disapproval. Showing you care is more important than saying the right thing. Share your concern and offer to be there to support your friend when they reach out to an adult. Be sure to tell a trusted adult even if your friend asks you not to, 
say anything. They will be okay. They need to get support. Students cannot provide this level of support that a struggling student needs. How do you tell a trusted adult? You just go to them. Suicide needs to be taken seriously every time, and adults need to know. You may think that you and your friends can get through anything together, but when suicide is involved, adults need to know. And if it's at that time of day or night or whatever, um, an adult is not available, call 988. Uh, they have on here 800-273-8255. That's the old 800 number. But if you do 988, you can text it also. You will get through to a crisis hotline. Who are our trusted adults at school? Any of our teachers, our CSOs, campus security officers, and coaches. Care Center 701 and Care Center Annex 124. Your counselor 113, principal and assistant principals 119. These are resources that you can always go to. We will make sure that we have these um, available to you easily. We actually have a little card that you can keep in your wallet or your phone case that, uh, that we put out from the care centers. It has the mental health crisis hotline, 988. 911 gets you through to emergency. There is uh, this live online chat that you can do, suicidepreventionlifeline.org, as well as the... Um, 800-273-8255 Prevention Lifeline. 1-877-726-4727 is a good one. SAMHSA is like super dope. They're great. Uh, they help a lot with uh, substance abuse and stuff like that, but they are very good with helping with crises. As well as 866-615-6464. That's the National Institute of Mental Health. That's their resource center. All right, but those are not 24 hours. The 988 one is 24 hours, seven days a week, 365. So in closing, these are five ways, five steps that can help save a life. We're asking all of us to commit to them. Right? It says two of them, but I think we can all you know, commit to five because they're all, I'm not saying they're easy, but they're simple, right? And we can do them whenever um, we see someone struggling with their mental health and just ask, are you thinking about harming or hurting yourself, keeping them safe, help move them to a visible place near a trusted adult, be there, listen carefully and acknowledge their feeling, help them connect right? You can call or text the 988 number, connect them to a trusted adult, okay? And then stay connected, follow up and help them feel connected. People are not uh, to be like dismissed or they're, you know, not all together or weak or anything that are going through this, okay? We have Building connections, relationships, you know, before, during, and after this situation is crucial. All right. Welcoming people back when they've gone through a difficult situation in terms of mental health or anything is everything. So that's that's how we get down at Poly High School. I appreciate your time. Yeah, this is serious. This is life. These are all life skills, okay? And we love you guys and appreciate you.